Hello everyone, welcome to Down and Dirty. I'm Larry, and today we're going to make a rear shelf for the JLUR diesel. Uh, it's mainly to get things up off the floor for uh, my, making road trips, camping, and what have you. So you can make a bed on the floor and be able to stretch out and everything. I got a foam mattress that I use, you can, uh, use whatever you want to sleep on. This makes the convenience of getting things up and out of your way. I'm not doing any tie down provisions on this uh, yet. I don't want to play around with it. I figured I would just, you know, want a bungee cord or I'm probably going to use the, uh, just the pole strap, not the ratchet type strap, but pole type straps and just go all the way around it to tie anything large down. And uh, just kind of work on it from there. See how it goes. All right. Like, subscribe, share. Let's get started. Okay, so here's my idea of this rack thing. Rack system. I'm going to use this back bolt holds top on. The next bolt up that holds the top on. We're going to bolt down this two foot piece of angle iron. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So this thing's going to be pieced, bolted together because it's the only way I can figure out how to get it in here. Or the best way. So I've cut uh, this two foot piece and another. After measuring out, that's what I want. Marked off here where I'm going to drill the holes for those bolts to bolt it down with the top. And then I'm going to, I'm not going to miter or anything. I'm just going to lay the, the cross piece of angles on top of here and bolt it down with two flat heads on each corner. And that will leave an eighth inch gap all along this strip for, right now I'm just planning on putting OSB on it. I've got some OSB here, so I think I'm just gonna use that. <clears throat> so I may tack weld on just some pieces of eighth inch to fill that in. So we got the passenger side drilled, finished removing these bolts. Let's start backing this one out. I want to see how long these bolts were. If they were going to be long enough to have this angle iron, or it's going to have to come up with longer bolts. These are plenty long. I'm only adding an eighth inch angle, so not a problem. Your side here. And with both of these bolted into place, we'll get our cross measurements for our cross pieces. Alright, so we got it bolted in, get some measurements here. So I couldn't do this with a camera in here. Actually, I had a tough enough time with just getting the light in here and drilling these. It was not an entertaining time. But I used a center drill and I drilled through the top one into the bottom one. So that makes pilot holes in the next piece. So everything lines up to bolt it together. Now, my big dilemma was the side of this top angles. So I couldn't get a regular drill in here. I couldn't get my 90 degree, 90 degree drill in here because everything was too big because this is uh, made into the interior. So everything was in my way. So what I did, I just took a right angle die grinder and number three center drill is quarter inch diameter, basically fits this collet. So that's how I ended up drilling both sides here. Okay, now I'm doing the front rail. A bit different than the back. The back, I drilled it with a center drill in the Jeep. Made a hell of a mess in here. And this one, I really don't have room because this sticks out so far here. So I can't even get in there and do it the way I did it. So I've pre-drilled this rail. With a 156 drill bit on both ends 
and clamped it on here with vice grips. My pre-drilled holes, I'm gonna use this tool. It's called a transfer punch. Basically, you drill your hole just slightly larger than your punch so it doesn't have a lot of movement and it's got a ground tip on it. So you stick that in your hole in your drilled hole there and then you just tap it with a hammer. Without hitting the glass. Then that makes a punch mark for where your hole is. So you can get perfect alignment. So we'll remove that bracket and we'll take a punch and make a deeper punch mark for our center drill so it doesn't walk off and then you should end up with perfect alignment from one to the next. So here we are, I've already used my uh, spring-loaded punch to make these more profound because you could barely see them. I couldn't, they, they didn't even show up on camera. I could barely see them. Looking at them myself because I couldn't hit the center of that uh, transfer punch very hard because it's so close to the glass. I don't want to break, break out my side glass. So. so I've already punched these out more so they'll guide the center drill better. And then we're just going to hand drill these with the center drill and then an actual drill bit. So we're going to be using a small center drill. These come in different sizes. This is the smallest one I have. Um, they have a very fine tip drill tip on them and then it bevels up for a leading edge for your drill bit they're rigid they don't flex they don't walk off uh, if you center punch a piece of steel like this it will stay in that center punch unlike a drill bit that'll tend to want to wander around walk off because drill bits are flexible and i also use this uh, lps edge <clears throat> wax use it for center drills and for tapping especially works good for drilling and everything else <clears throat> but with a center drill you want to make sure it's well lubricated and not with something like WD-40 you need something better like oil actual motor oil or this wax or something heavy that isn't just going to run away or evaporate WD-40 evaporates so fast that it's about useless as a lubricant or a cutting oil With this wax, like I coated the whole end of the bit with wax, and it melts as it gets warm as you're drilling. <clears throat> now we're going to drill it with a drill bit for the tap, because these holes are going to get tapped, five millimeter. Next, we'll tap this. So here we have our tap. And again, take the tap, just like I did with the center drill, just coat it good with wax. And one thing about tapping hole, you wanna make sure that you keep it perpendicular to the piece, both this way and this way. So as you start your tap, you kinda of wanna get back and eyeball it. Thinner piece like this, maybe not as critical. You don't have to go very deep, but the thicker the part is, it's far more critical because if you start your tap crooked, it's going to be binding as it's trying to go down the hole because it's not lined up. And another good important tip is just turn half turn or so and go back turn again and go back you want to keep doing that to break the chips off so you get a nice clean 
threads. And you don't end up binding and breaking the tap off. So after you tap the hole, make sure you get all of your shavings out of the flutes, the grooves. And coat it back up with wax skin. Or whatever you're using. Like I said, like the center drill or tapping like this, don't use WD-40. Use at least like a motor oil, air tool oil, something heavy. That's going to stick with it. I see so many people using WD-40 as a lubricant for machining, drilling, tap. That's just the worst thing to use. It's WD-40. It gets hot if you're doing any type of drilling or anything. That gets hot. Your WD-40 just evaporates very quickly. Okay, there we have two tap holes. Now I got six more to do. Put two screws in each corner. We've got a front and rear rail. Fold it down to two side rails, so that's two holes per corner. So on our cross, our long pieces that go across the Jeep for the shelf, rack, whatever we want to call this here. It's a clearance bit, four or five millimeter bolt. And these are the holes that I drilled for the transfer punch, which was a 156 bit. Right now we're drilling out with a 204. Clearance for five millimeter thread on the bolt. Clamp this down. I'm trying to hold it at the same time. And then we take this chamfer bit because we're putting flathead screws in here. So they end up flush so we don't have anything sticking up for. Like I said, I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna put OSB on this. I may later do something else, but for now we're just starting off. We have to put an OSB on it, so I want this to be flush, so I don't want any bolt heads sticking up. Right there you have it. That's our flat head that we're using and it sits flush now. So now I'll tamper the other hole. And just like tapping, we have eight of these to do. Two on each corner. And then bits like this, you wanna run them in a slower speed, drill speed, not a super high speed. Watch where I'm at depth wise. So there you have it. So we've got one of these done. Now we've got three more ends to do. So I'm going to test fit this one corner. I have one corner completely finished. This being the uh, passenger side, I think. Yeah, passenger side rail. And this being the front. It sits right behind the passenger seats, rear seats. Looks like everything lines up pretty good. It's a good time. So, you know, if you're doing flatheads like this with countersunk holes or chamfered holes like that, it's very critical that everything is lined up very well. Because unlike a regular bolt and a bolt hole where you can have clearance in your bolt hole to slop to let it move around, you're not going to have that with this. Because once you tighten down this flathead, when it sits down into that chamfer, that's where it's going to be. 
So that's why I did it the way I did it. Try to get the very best alignment possible. Okay, so there's one side complete. All right, so I've got it in there for the test fit. Everything fit up perfect, of course. And then I've got some OSB to stick in here. I'm not sure I'll leave those permanent, but I'm kind of in a rush for a trip coming up. So I'm thinking I might go to like a heavy gauge expanded metal, but it has to be three pieces because of this roll bar to get it in here. So I have uh, two ends and a large center. And I'm going to screw this down as well, each piece, so you don't get any rattling, squeaking, banging noises. So it's come out pretty good. And I'm going to right now, actually, I got a can of undercoating that I bought by accident. I was going to take back, but I never did. It's probably too late now. So I'm going to use that undercoating and spray this OSB. All right, so I got my OSB coated. Use some uh, rubberized undercoating and it's break in. I just happen to have some that I bought by mistake. It's going to take back. Good use for this. And then I put black duct tape around all of the edges because the edges of this OSB just want to keep splintering away. It's a pain in the butt. So I just thought I'd tape it up so we don't have any more splintering and wood all over the place. So that's what I just did. I'm going to bolt these down with six millimeter flatheads. So I took my tap drill and drilled holes through the wood outside of the Jeep so it wouldn't get wood all over the place. And then I laid them in here and I took my drill and ran it in each one of the holes. And that created these dimples from the drill bit. Did it all the way around. So then I'll take the steel out and drill and tap it. It'll be less messy than doing it in here. It is more work putting it in and taking it out like that, but it's a lot easier than trying to sweep, especially steel shavings, out of the carpet or anything else. Okay, we're gonna get this rail drilled and tapped. You got all these little dimples here. The more I ran the drill bit with a piece of wood on it, with a hole pre-drilled in the wood, just so we can mark where our holes go. And like before, we're gonna use a center drill. It's a rigid drill bit with a point. It's made for basically making a perfect pilot hole. So your drill bit doesn't walk off. You don't have to go all that deep. You don't even have to go all the way through. You just keep it. I'm just doing where I get close to all the way through. Don't forget to use a good lubricant like this wax. It's the best. I'm going to take a chamfer, slightly chamfer, I guess, the thread holes here to knock the edge off. 
makes it so the bolt leads in easier. Get rid of that sharp leading edge thread that you get from snapping. Pull it right here, it's that sharp little, and it'll cut you. They're not just gonna flake off with your finger. So that knocks that right off. So it's smooth. That's it. Okay, so now we are opening up our holes for a bolt and countersinking them. For a flathead to be flush. Just open them up for the bolt size and then countersink them for the head size. Close enough for this. That would be perfect. Plus, this is wood, and as you tighten it up, the wood's going to compress some. So, we're installing our flathead bolts here. All the ones that we've installed in this project, you want to get them all started. Not tighten them all down until you have all of them in your whatever piece you're putting together. Did pretty good here. Everything has lined up perfectly. Back to tighten up the first two. For the ratchet. So we're doing them all by hand. And there. So there it is. We have all of the bolts in. All tightened up, ready to go. I think this thing came out great. Excited to use it. Like I said for now, because I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I could change the flatheads into regular bolts and bolt down like a D-ring. A flip down type D rings if I want to in areas. 
For now, I think I'm just going to use like the regular pole straps and go all the way around for like large items. Like I'm thinking of putting like duffel bags of clothes up here, things, you know, not real heavy to start with. So then that just leaves tons of room underneath. So let's see what we ended up with for clearance anyway. I really did check this. So we're over 17 inches into there. So you got plenty of room. All right, that concludes this video of the rear shelf rack. Uh, do it yourself project that we did here. Let's use some angle iron and some OSB. Still think I'm probably gonna do expanded metal on that later. I just didn't have the time or the resources to go get some right now. And uh, I don't know, I may just leave it the way it is too. We'll see, we'll try it out. Definitely very happy with it. Got plenty of room underneath of it for uh, sleeping, for traveling, uh, camping out, whatever. And the shelf will work great for uh, getting things up out of your way. All right, like, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching. Take care. Appreciate y'all. Thank you.